<laughs> My name is Gordon Patron from the Business School. I'm, I'm going to take a perhaps somewhat different perspective, um, hopefully a complementary perspective. This really does come out of discussions and, and work we've been doing for a number of years around um, various game worlds um, and start with basically a notion of the labour in game worlds. Now, what we're talking about isn't so much the notion of gamification, which obviously gets quite a lot of press and gets a lot of discussion, but actually genuine labour work. If you're a gamer, you think of it as grind, you talk about it in terms of grind. In terms of what we're looking at is to kind of take that over to particular game worlds and understand them in terms of a, an economy, of a world, and not really distinguished by the fact that it's actually a game world where, in this case, public pirates are pretending to be a pirate and talk piratey, because these people are actually also working, they're labouring. And <coughs> within the game world, you have a variety of puzzles, hence puzzle pirates, seems obvious, where effectively you're forming, performing various functions on the ship. In this case, you're doing rigging. That's a particularly good screen, I might add. And what you're doing is you're earning wages for your time in the game. You need to work collaboratively with other people on your ship and against other pirates and other pirate ships. And the labour, the mundane labour, the everyday labour, is interspersed with sword fighting. This type of labour where, in a sense, it's almost an interlude from the mundane. It's an interlude from the grind of the day-to-day -day work of making the ship work to getting to a sword fight and actually defeating your enemy and hopefully acquiring some gold, some pieces of eight. Puzzle Pirates is actually an incredibly complex economy. It's actually been worked through. And this diagram reflects, actually it's out of date, it reflects the basic game economy. It reflects where exchanges have to occur, where, don't even try and read it, where the exchanges actually have to move backwards and forwards. One of the big problems with Puzzle Pirates initially was inflation. There was massive inflation. Everything became expensive because there was no sink. There was no post-sink. You couldn't lose pieces of eight. So suddenly what happened was the black ship, as one example of a post-sink, it took money away from you to effectively even out the economy. And what we're seeing is people are labouring and labouring and working, but at the same time, not necessarily in the conventional sense. They're actually working in a very systematic way and they are producing labour and producing benefit but perhaps not in the way that you would imagine if you initially talk about labour. Perhaps more worryingly, as we were doing the work around this, we actually came to the realisation that it wasn't perhaps this type of labour, but this type of labour, which was actually very repetitive, mundane, uh, what's described as syntactic labour, effectively moving things around. And that moving around produced value, created value, but what it really did was produce benefit for someone other than the, the labourers in the field, if you like, or the labourers pretending to be pirates and speaking on piracy. Other games also have this element. Um, Farmville, I always ask, who's, who used to play Farmville? Show of hands. Who plays Farmville now? Almost no one, because there was too much labour involved to get any real benefit. So you didn't see the benefit. And if you're very utilitarian, you had everything planted, every square inch planted, but ultimately, this is an important aspect of it, as with both of these games, you had a market, you could replace your in-game labour with out-game real money, which is, of course, the basis of these games. And that was really interesting because, basically, you're replacing your labour and the effect of the, the exploitation of your labour with money that you've earned elsewhere. And that's actually the basis of a lot of these games. It was a sort of quite interesting realisation. The idea that you're being exploited, well, it's never really expressed that way because there's a degree of balance with the enjoyment of the actual game. But there is a degree of exploitation there. The games don't work if you're not there labouring. How do you resist this? In Farmville, you get really creative. In Farmville, you go and create fields of unicorns and all sorts of other shiny things. And you actually resist, not necessarily by dropping out, but by ignoring the gameplay and actually producing a piece of art, and your own piece of art, or maybe someone else's piece of art, your choice. <laughs> that's a Farmville farm. It ain't gonna necessarily produce much, it will produce something, but that is a Farmville farm that is in one way resisting the actual labor demands of the game and of the game developers. So in a way, there's something going on there quite interesting. Recently, I've got more interested in Ingress, which is Google's augmented reality game, partly because there's no purchases available. This is Google. Google gives things away because they can. This is actually all the portals in Manchester and Salford. We're off to the left there. There's a portal just outside there. It's all imaginary. It's like capture the flags. 
you have an online app where effectively you're trying to level up and you're trying to gain um, from the enemy, green or blue. And the interesting thing for, the, for me for this was the lack of the economy, apparently, immediately. But looking at this and having played this and worn my running shoes out playing this over the last two months, um, you get people who are completely obsessed with this. So the benefit for Google is actually that they've brought a whole bunch of people to Google+. Plus. They've brought a whole bunch of very hard to get to, basically male, basically somewhere in sort of 30s and 40s, into Google+, Plus, who weren't there before. Me included, I got sucked in. And it struck me that that's <coughs> starting to look a lot like the old moiety and kinship relation diagrams of anthropology, where actually, to succeed in the game, you've actually got to negotiate with the enemy, and you've, in the moiety situation, you've got to breed with the enemy, but in this situation, you've got to basically interact with the enemy to get both of you to progress in the game. And I think that's a whole level of uh, discussion to explore. Is it exploitation in the way, perhaps, that we might conventionally see it? It arguably has an exploitative element to it. Zynga is a very famous and very um, well-off um, games development company now, thanks to games like Farmville. Do the players actually receive any benefit financially, any reward for their labour? Only the satisfaction of playing the game. So it's a slightly cliché conclusion, but in a sense, the sort of Orwell versus Huxley discussion, in a way, Huxley sort of seems to be becoming more true here. We've got games which are actually obscuring labour, and actually producing benefit and creating value for organisations, but we're missing that because effectively we're playing the game and enjoying ourselves.